Well, this is session 48. My name is Jim Caseman. Welcome back. We're talking about how to know God intimately. So, we're talking about spiritual things. God is a spirit. And we're just, uh, with God's help, I've been endeavoring to help all of you that are listening to understand how things work in the spiritual realm so that we can cooperate with God in this physical dimension and let him manifest himself spiritually. Well, we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the last uh, session or so. And, of course, uh, uh, the, the, we found out that in the scriptures, wherever we saw examples of people being baptized in the Holy Spirit, they always spoke with other tongues. And, of course, we saw in the scriptures that they were speaking according to the perfect will of God, Romans 8, 26, 27. They were speaking supernaturally as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, and Acts 1, 4, and, of course, in Romans 8, 26, 27. It's a supernaturally letting the Holy Spirit form the words. We, form, we furnish the vocal cords. The Holy Spirit brings out the words according to, God's, according to God's will. Now, why speak in tongues? Well, let me give you several reasons. Number one, tongues is the initial sign that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we already saw that in Acts 2, 4 and 1 Corinthians 10 and 46. And as well, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2, it's for spiritual edification. For he who speaks in, uh, uh, in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him, how be it in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. And so we're, being, we're speaking mysteries, we are, uh, we're, we're speaking to God, and we are edifying ourselves. It says in verse 3, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Okay, so when I'm speaking in tongues, I'm speaking to God, and I'm edifying myself. The word edify means to charge, like charging up an automobile battery. And so, uh, and when we're speaking, it's like charging up an automobile battery, so you feel you need a little boost spiritually, speak in tongues, and you'll find yourself having that strength that you need. He who speaks in tongues speaks mysteries unto God. We see in verse 2, we're speaking divine secrets with God. And of course, when I'm praying, and I'm praying to God, I'm speaking in the spirit of speaking mysteries, I'm speaking to God, and my spirit is praying. When I say my spirit, that's me. I am praying. I know it's a lot of difficult at times to, when we say I pray God, their whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. I'm a human spirit. I live in the physical body. Kind of awkward to say my spirit, but what it really is, I am praying to God as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance. And when he is giving me utterance, he's praying according to the will of God, Romans 6, 27. So we're talking divine talking supernaturally to God and in the uh, in the process edifying ourselves or charging ourselves up now also thirdly speaking in tongues reminds us of the spirit's indwelling presence the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and when we're baptized with the Holy Spirit and we're speaking with other tongues it it reminds us that God is inside of us and that's important for us I mean, I don't know about you, but it sure makes me feel a lot better all day long. And even when I go to sleep, when I say goodnight to the Lord, I know that God lives inside of me. Wherever I go, He's always with me. I have that indwelling presence of God. And speaking in tongues is a continual experience for all the days of my life on this earth, for the rest of my life on this earth, not just for the initial evidence, but it's a continual thing because we are to pray without ceasing. So we, I, I, we're to pray every day, not only in our known language, whether it's English, German, Italian, depending on what country you're in, but also in the unknown language. We need to pray both ways. Fourthly, praying in tongues is we're praying in line with God's perfect will. And I've already made reference to that, that scripture a number of times already. So let me read it one more time. Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Again, we, 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 we don't understand. We don't even know what, how to pray. We can't see into the spiritual realm. We don't know what's in people's hearts and so forth. So likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. 
but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit supernaturally makes intercession according to the will of God. So he knows who to intercede for. And sometimes I know because I'll say, Lord, I've prayed I, I, as much as I know to pray in English. I've prayed for this situation. It's a serious situation. I don't know how to go any further. I'm going to yield to you now, Holy Spirit, and I believe you'll intercede through me for that person, the perfect will of God. So in those cases, I, I, I've asked him to intercede for a special person, and I know. But most of the time, I don't even know who I'm interceding for. It could very well be a person on the other side of the world that I don't even know. The Holy Spirit is looking for bodies that will cooperate with him so that he can intercede for the people that he desires to, to, to have their needs met and that they need to be interceded for. All right. The perfect will of God. So my mind is not involved. When I pray in tongues, it's a language I have not learned with my mind. Now, when I first asked, uh, was prayed for to be filled with the Holy Spirit, my mind fought me. Because my mind is used to being in control. It took me some effort, but finally I let a couple of words come out of my mouth. Shadabaki, something like that. And I was just so happy. I was just so happy. I don't know, I just, I just had, my mind just kept me from, my, you know, my mouth wanted to make sounds I hadn't heard before. Allow the spirit to give me those sounds I'd heard before, but my mind just was blocked. It. And finally I just said, I just felt like the devil was laughing at me. Well, I says, forget it. I stepped out by faith. I don't know. I had a couple words. I was so excited. I jumped in my car, drove around town, and just said those two words. And then, of course, each day went by. I got more words, more words, and pretty soon I had a full, fluent language. But I had a real problem with my head. But you just need to step out by faith. Even if you know it sounds like baby talk or it sounds stupid. Shut up. You just do it. And the Holy Spirit will be right there to give you the utterance. Step with childlike faith, just step out and obey God. All right. Well, of course, praying in tongues, we pray according to the perfect will of God, which means that we it keeps selfishness out of our prayers. Selfishness always hinders faith and prayer. But praying in tongues gets rid of selfishness because then we're praying according to the perfect will of God. Our mind is not involved. And then number five, when we pray in tongues, it stimulates our faith. And I go over here now to Jude chapter 20. And we find this verse. Here we are, Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So when we pray in tongues, we build ourselves up in the holy faith. It stimulates our faith and stimulates our faith and helps us to trust God more fully. And it helps us to believe God for other things. Praise the Lord. And then also, number, number uh, six, praying in tongues enables us to pray for the unknown. And I've already kind of shared that and made, a, made allude to that. And that's what's really so awesome. I remember a story told, and I don't remember the, the details uh, exactly, but it was a missionary that was in trouble. It was near death. And, 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 you know, they were praying for him there. And then here, in, in, in some foreign country, and then back in the United States, a lady was, in, uh, was, uh, uh, was inspired by the Lord to pray for this missionary and prayed in tongues and tongues and prayed in tongues and finally felt that prayer had been answered. And a year or two later or something like that, the missionary comes home and they got to talking and they checked their diaries. They both kept diaries and found out that this lady was told... And it was in, it was directed by the Holy Spirit to pray in tongues for this missionary specifically and found out this missionary was on the point of death at the same time that she was praying, same day. They figured it all out. So we were, she was praying for someone on the other side, didn't even know what the situation was for that someone, but uh, God supernaturally, the Holy Spirit prayed, uh, prayed the perfect will of God through that lady and that missionary was totally healed and made whole. Isn't that awesome? It's a supernatural part of our praying with God. Praying in English is supernatural too. But this is also a very supernatural part where the Holy Spirit has complete liberty to pray according to His will. 
Praise the Lord. Well, time is up again. And uh, just be blessed in everything you set your hands to. In Jesus' name, amen.